your holiness, your beatitude, your excellencies, reverend clergy, Holodomor survivors, honorable members of Congress, Madam First Lady, esteemed ambassadors, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Shanovna Ukrainska Gromado. In a city of monuments, a city of hope where dreams motivate a nation, a city the captive world reveres as an inspiration for democracy. This city, the capital of the free world, now bears a new memorial, a memorial of a 20th century tragedy that so reviles one's innermost instincts as to that event in Ukraine in 1932-33, which brutally maliciously and indiscriminately annihilated millions of men, women, and children. The inscription on the Holodomor Memorial is short, simple, yet powerful. Famine, genocide in Ukraine. In memory of the millions of innocent victims of a man-made famine in Ukraine engineered and implemented by Stalin's totalitarian regime. Upamyat pro milione nevinnik zhert shtuchnoho holodu v Ukrajini splanovanoho ta vchinnoho stalinskim totalitarnim režimom. We Ukrainians refer to the period of 1932-33 as the years of the Holodomor, or simply meaning murder by starvation. But the relevancy and importance of this memorial is not only to remember and commemorate, but to understand. Past habits of domination, Russia's century-old demand to control Ukraine have resurfaced. Ukraine knows that Moscow is still capable of brutality. Let us be clear. Putin threatened to reduce Ukraine to venal poverty in the 21st century, but instead of starving people to death, he promised to let them freeze. Here, the lessons of the Holodomor are relevant today. Despite the veneer of modernity and sophistication, Moscow is still capable of deep cruelty. Russia's leaders are willing to break people and destroy lives in pursuit of their grandiose worldview. As we honor the Holodomor, we must also be wary of our present. And therefore, the remembrance of the Ukrainian famine genocide is not, however, simply a Ukrainian issue. It is a worldwide issue. It is an American issue. America's long-standing role as the foremost champion of human rights in the world makes Washington, D.C. the most fitting location for a memorial of this tragedy. For these reasons, the unfortunate act of genocide 82 years ago must be recognized and recognized now so that history never repeats itself. The world community must take up this mantle to ensure that humanity does not forget about the Ukrainian Holodomor of 1932-33. With sincerest appreciations, we humbly thank our elected officials, most notably Representative Sander Levin, for championing and sponsoring our cause for the establishment of this memorial and for standing up for the principles of truth and human value, lest once again peaceful co coexistence this time in the modern era thwarts the recognition of this genocide for future generations. We assemble today to bear witness to a truly remarkable moment as we dedicate this memorial which will become the beacon of hope for those who view it and marvel in its meaning and significance. May those who participate in today's ritual ceremony shine the light of truth upon others 
And may those who frequent this memorial pass the knowledge from generation to generation and inspire the youngest to stand firmly in honor and memorialize the millions who needlessly suffered at the hands of a dictator. Our common unifying theme is quite clear. Ukraina pamiętaje, svit vyznaje. Ukraine remembers, the world acknowledges. Today, Ukraine needs support from the world much like it did 80 years ago, when the countryside was ravaged in politically calculating engineered famine. The best way to honor the sacrifices of the past, of the millions needlessly murdered during the whole Holodomor, is to continue the fight for a strong, independent, democratic, and prosperous future for Ukraine. I ask that as we gather here today, let us pledge to one another that we will always recall the victims of the Ukrainian famine genocide Holodomor and their incredible sacrifice as well as to thank those who continue to bring tragic episodes of man's inhumanity to man to the attention of the world. I now ask that you please stand for the presentation of colors and join with Yulia Stupin in the singing of the U.S. and Ukrainian national anthems. that our flag was 
Our keynote speaker this afternoon truly needs no introduction. In fact, I alluded to him in my opening remarks. Should you have already recognized him amongst the distinguished guests on stage, you would surely notice our community's exuberance to have him with us. He is not only a true friend of Ukraine, but can easily re be regarded as an honorary Ukrainian. The list of attributes and contributions of our keynote speaker has accomplished for the Ukrainian community is too numerous to, to enumerate at this particular commemoration. In fact, we need a whole ceremony just for that feat alone. However, let me at least highlight some of the major contributions our keynote speaker has supported throughout the years. Firstly, our keynote speaker was the original founder of the Congressional Ukrainian Caucus, and after nearly 20 years of activity, still serves as its co-chair. Secondly, and most importantly, he initiated and sponsored the Ukrainian Famine Genocide Memorial Bill, which was signed into law by President George Bush in 2006, without which we would not be here this, today. Our main speaker has stood firmly with the Ukrainian people during two revolutions in Ukraine and has introduced countless legislation on Ukrainian issues. Without further ado, it is truly an honor and most esteemed pleasure to present to you Representative Sander Levin. Hi. Now, Reverend Clergy, so many of you are here. Mrs. Poroshenko, the First Lady of Ukraine, all America welcomes here, you here to the United States of America. Well, Michael told me how to say this. Dobre den. How's that? Now, I'm not the featured speaker. I'm just one of us here, so many thousands of us here, who are assembled because today is a memorable day for keeping memory alive. Today we're lighting the way for those still uninformed about the truth. To, today we express our faith, and I want to emphasize this. Speaking the truth will prevail over the power of those who deny it. The horrors of the Ukrainian famine of 1932-33 resulted from the deliberate effort by the Soviet Union to destroy Ukrainian identity and to thwart the battle of the Ukrainian people for their independence and freedom. And that battle has taken on added meaning in recent years. Thousands fighting for freedom in the Madan stirred hearts and minds of all of us here. All of us here. You know, I look about and I see so many of us here, including I think younger people standing on the statue of Columbus. That, in a way, says something very important. With this monument, our nation's capital testifies that Americans will not yield in our support for the Ukrainian people as they persevere in their hard-fought efforts to build a free and democratic nation 
with a society open and secure for all the citizens of Ukraine. And so vividly, with this monument, we Americans also signify our determination to speak out and to speak up clearly about genocide. You know, as I was thinking about today, I remembered when I was a student. I remember reading a book about the Soviet Union. I was reading a portion that supposedly explained the economic policies and practices of the Soviet Union. And when it dealt with the Ukrainian famine, I came across words which tried to minimize the loss of life and the horrors of the famine. I was startled, this was decades ago, by those callous words, and they stayed with me. So decades later, when I came to meet families at home in Michigan, who had suffered from Holodomor, those words, decades later, haunted still more. So the endeavor began, ensued for almost 15 years, to bring about an American monument to the millions whose lives were lost in the famine. During this arduous effort, some argued that a remembrance should be combined with other events which had occurred in other places. We said no. We said absolutely no. We said there must be a separate monument. A genocide, if not clearly told, can spawn another. The monument to Holodomor, we said, must tell its own tragic story. And this monument we unveil today does just that. It is so located just a short distance from here that thousands in the capital of our nation will pass it every day, some in a large hurry. But hopefully many will pause to reflect and to vow to remember. This monument is so evocatively and creatively put together and rendered that it will perpetually, perpetually keep alive and honor the memory of millions who lost their lives totally innocently. So many have joined in this effort. In both governments, in both governments, and in numerous communities in our two nations and beyond. And we see signs here from all over America. This monument we launch today embodies our deep American commitment to our basic values as Americans. For all of us here, wherever we come from, this monument represents our hopes for victories for our shared values, and most significantly, for our humanity that closely binds us together, both today and may it be for all the days 
in the years ahead. Thank you for letting me join you on this memorable day for Ukraine and for our country, the United States of America. Congressman, you hear the enthusiasm from the crowd. I echo their appreciation. I echo their appreciation for your tireless efforts in supporting the Ukrainian American community and for sponsoring this particular bill. You truly, Congressman Levin, are, is and will be forever our Ukrainian congressman. <laughs> On behalf of everyone here present, especially your constituents which are out there as well, thank you. On behalf of the entire community and on behalf of Ukrainian nation. It is truly an honor to introduce our featured speaker from Ukraine. Only her second time in Washington in her, in her current role and capacity, our featured speaker is highly regarded in Ukraine for actively engaging in social and cultural issues, benevolent work on behalf of the Petro Poroshenko Charity Foundation, actively raising her four children, and as an accomplished doctor. I have been told that our next speaker also has a surprise for us within her remarks. Please warmly welcome to the podium the First Lady of Ukraine, Marina Poroshenko. Vitaimo, Pani Poroshenko. Шановна українська громада, шановне пане голову, високопреосвячені владики, дорогі американські друзі, неможливо висловити біль українського народу від злочинів радянської влади, неможливо знайти виправдання звірству. Майже століття тому чорною землею було засипано життя мільйонів невинних людей, мільйонів українців. На жаль, ми не можемо повернути час назад, але ми можемо зберегти в серці пам'ять, тому що ми і є їхнє непрожите життя. Україна вистояла перед загрозою тотального знищення, вижила в нерівній боротьбі зі злом. Сьогодні тут, у столиці Сполучених Штатів Америки, основою яких є принципи свободи і демократії, ми робимо надзвичайно важливу справу. Ми не тільки відкриваємо меморіал жертвам Голодомору в Україні 1932-1933 років. Ми пам'ятаємо сьогодні кожну душу, Кожну жертву, кожного мученика. Сім років тому ми відкривали національний меморіал жертвам Голодомору в Києві. І я вірю, що ці два меморіали у Києві і Вашингтоні будуть символами і засторогою злочинам 
проти людства і людяності у всьому світі. Хочу висловити слова великої подяки українській світовій громаді, яка прикладає неймовірні зусилля для визнання справедливості і визнання трагедії українського народу геноцидом. Особливо хочу відзначити автора проєкту меморіалу Ларису Курілов. Дякую вам за творче втілення історичної правди. Хочу також подякувати Конгресу США і особливо авторам закону, дякую вам, який дозволив встановити меморіал на американській землі. Від щирого серця дякую всім, всьому американському народу за підтримку і прагнення до правди. Для мене незвичайно важливо сьогодні бути тут з вами, в Вашингтоні, де я маю честь і велику відповідальність презентувати звернення президента України Петра Порошенка. Шановні американські друзі, пані і панове, нині відбувається справді історична подія – відкриття в столиці Сполучених Штатів Америки меморіалу жертвам Голодомору в Україні 1932-1933 років. І це дійство – справжнє свідчення перемоги правди над брехнею, добра над злом. І, до речі, є певний символізм в тому, що цей величний монумент постає в річницю більшовицького перевороту 17-го року минулого століття, який обернувся трагічними наслідками і не лише для України. А з іншого боку, в перший рік дії законів Незалежної України про декомунізацію та про державне визнання героїв національно-визвольних змагань. Через два тижні після місцевих виборів, перших майже за 100 років, в яких не брала участь комуністична партія, і за два тижні до другої річниці початку Революції Гідності, яка міцно поставила нашу країну на твердий європейський шлях. Шановні пані і панове, геноцид Голодомор став одним із найжахливіших злочинів в людській історії. Цей кримінал проти українського народу вчинив радянський комуністичний тоталітарний режим, в який тоді реінкарнувалася Російська імперія. Вона неодноразово міняла прапори, але її ненавість до України залишалася константою. Голодомор намагалися забрехати, замовчити. Хотіли знищити навіть рештки пам'яті про нього. І нічого в них не вийшло. На початку 80-х років минулого століття тисячі американців українського походження об'єдналися в поширенні правди про Голодомор, який в Кремлі тоді вже вважали надійно викресленим з історії. Результатом тієї потужної інформаційної кампанії української громадськості стала діяльність Комісії Сполучених Штатів із дослідження українського голоду 1932-1933 років. Сьогодні чудова нагода, аби подякувати всім, хто був причетний до створення та діяльності цієї комісії. І декого дозвольте згадати персонально. Виконавчим директором комісії, яка постала з ініціативи української громади в Америці і за всебічної підтримки Конгресу Сполучених Штатів Америки, став Джеймс Мейс. Ваші мертві вибрали мене. Цими майже біблійними словами Джеймс Мейс описав свою місію. Він – великий американець і великий українець. Один з найвідоміших дослідників Голодомору був одним із тих, кого ми називаємо людьми правди. Невтомний лицар істини повідав гірку правду про події 30-х років в Україні всьому світові. До речі, значною мірою і самій Україні. Серед головних джерел правди про Голодомор слід згадати і жнива скорботи, працю 
Роберта Конквеста. Ця безсмертна книга силою фактів поклала край фальсифікаціям радянсько-російського режиму про Голодомор. І Мейс, і Конквест, і багато інших американців відкривали світу правду. І неможливо забути про мільйони людей, замордованих голодом у мирний час на землі, яку весь світ називав не інакше, як житницею Європи. Смерть мільйонів українців і на початку 30-х років минулого століття була наслідком неприродних катаклізмів чи епідемій. Ці страшні жнива скорботи стали результатом нелюдської жорстокості тоталітарного режиму. Цей голод був спробою поставити українців на коліна, відібрати в нас гідність, знищити нашу національну ідентичність, умертвити надію на право творити власну долю на власній землі. І в такий спосіб імперія намагалася зруйнувати самі основи волелюбної української нації, підірвати нашу духовну культуру та етнічну самобутність. Парламенти багатьох країн, в тому числі і Конгрес Сполучених Штатів, визнали цей злочин геноцидом. І в 2006 році це зробила і Верховна Рада України. І я пишаюся тим, що моє тверде «за» пролунало багатоголосі тих, хто приймав те історичне рішення. Прямо тут і саме зараз спільними зусиллями Української громади Америки та Української держави у Вашингтоні відкривається меморіал, який стане черговим доказом того, що жодним ліхоліттям, жодним злочинним намерам не другів не здолати наш народ, який прагне правди, свободи, демократії та миру на своїй землі та у своїй державі. Меморіал у Вашингтоні відкривається в той час, коли Україна відстоює свою незалежність, долаючи перешкоди і даючи відсіч агресії Росії. Кремль знову, як і в часи Голодомору, намагається стерти Україну з карти світу. Смерть знову приходить зі Сходу. Та я глибоко переконаний в тому, що як і 80 років тому, ніяка зла московська сила не здатна поставити українців на коліна, змусити нас відмовитись від свободи, незалежності і гідності особливо. Я хотів би висловити щиру вдячність президенту і уряду Сполучених Штатів Америки, всьому дружньому американському народові за солідарність з українським народом і українській громаді Сполучених Штатів за підтримку історичної батьківщини. Шановні пані і панове, давайте помолимося за невинні душі наших предків. Поклянемося ніколи не забути і не зрадити їх. Слава Україні! Вічна пам'ять загиблим! І слава Україні! Mrs. Poroshenko, thank you for joining us on this momentous day and occasion and please convey the gratitude and appreciation of the Ukrainian community for all of your efforts. If I may ask that you extend our warmest greetings to your husband, the President of Ukraine, Petro Poroshenko, and wish him good health and fortitude in his difficult and challenging tasks of leading the nation of Ukraine. Shastevam Boje. Our next speaker comes to us this afternoon with a background as a former professor of international relations at Georgetown University and a senior fellow at the Council of Foreign Relations. Currently, he is special assistant to the president and senior director for European Affairs at the National Security Council. I've also been told that our next speaker has a special message also to deliver. Please welcome to the podium, Dr. Charles Kopchin.
Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the White House, I would like to welcome all of you to Washington for this momentous and solemn occasion. It is an honor to be here today with so many distinguished guests, in particular the First Lady of Ukraine. Welcome to Washington. And as an American whose grandparents left from Uman in central Ukraine in 1922, I am especially pleased to be here with you to participate in today's ceremony. The American people join together with all Ukrainians, both in this country and around the world, to honor the memory of the millions of your countrymen who so tragically starved to death as a result of the tyrannical policies of Joseph Stalin. Today we are filled with deep sorrow for those who perished, but also determination, determination that mankind will fight to ensure that such atrocities not be repeated. The Holodomor has been etched into our collective consciousness and it is now imprinted in bronze here in Washington, just down the street behind the podium. Thanks to the courage and persistence of Ukrainians worldwide, especially Ukrainian Americans, and of course of historians and archivists, of government officials and civil activists, and of course of those who lost their loved ones so many years ago, but vowed never to forget. This day of remembrance and solidarity with all Ukrainians is particularly meaningful as we witness the destructive actions being taken against the Ukrainian nation today. President Obama said it best when he addressed the United Nations General Assembly in September of this year, and I quote, we cannot stand by when the sovereignty and territorial integrity of a nation is flagrantly violated. If that happens without consequence in Ukraine, it could happen to any nation. We continue to press for this crisis to be resolved in a way that allows a sovereign and democratic Ukraine to determine its future and control its territory. I reiterate that the United States stands firmly with the Ukrainian people as they seek to defend their homeland and build a free, prosperous, and democratic society. To conclude, I would like to read you an official statement from the White House commemorating the 82nd anniversary of the Holomador, which is being released this afternoon. Today we join Ukrainians here in America and around the world to remember the catastrophe of the Holodomor, and the millions of innocent Ukrainians starved to death more than eight decades ago as a result of the brutal policies of Joseph Stalin's regime. It was the Soviet regime's deliberate seizure of Ukrainian crops and refusal to provide food relief that turned Europe's breadbasket into a land of immeasurable human suffering. Despite decades of totalitarian rule, Ukrainians refused to abandon their drive for freedom and independence. And as the Ukrainian people face new threats to their territory and well-being, they once again have demonstrated their resolute commitment to human dignity. Ukraine's modern struggle for freedom and democracy is a testament to the unbreakable spirit of its people and honors the memory of the many who perished under Stalin's brutal rule. It is incumbent upon us to remember the horrors of the past as we renew our commitment to the prevention of future atrocities. Through the tireless efforts of the Ukrainian American community and friends of the Ukrainian people, a memorial now stands in the heart of our nation's capital allowing Americans to share in the somber memory of the Holodomor and reflect upon our shared determination to build a better world. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Kupchin, for your remarks and the statement.
from the White House. We appreciate your efforts in promoting and bringing this crime against humanity to the eyes of the world. This day would not be possible without two key political figures. Representative Sander Levin, sponsor of the bill, who you heard from earlier, and President George W. Bush, who signed H.R. 562 into law on lucky Friday the 13th, October 2006. While President George W. Bush could not be with us this afternoon to dedicate the memorial, we are honored to have with us a Ukrainian-American who worked at the State Department as the Undersecretary for Global Affairs during President Bush's administration. She is well known in the Ukrainian-American community as the daughter of the esteemed Ambassador Lev Dobryansky and President of the Ukrainian Congress Committee of America, who was instrumental in the realization of another memorial in Washington, D.C., to Taras Shevchenko. Please warmly welcome the Honorable Paula Dobryansky. Your Excellencies, the First Lady of Ukraine, ladies and gentlemen, greetings to those gathered in Washington, D.C. for the dedication of the Ukrainian Famine Genocide Holodomor Memorial. In 2006, I signed legislation that secured land for the special place of remembrance. Today's ceremony marks an important milestone for which you and others can be proud. The late scholar Robert Conquest published his definitive account of this period in Ukrainian history in order to, quote, register in the public consciousness of the West a knowledge and feeling for major events involving millions of people and millions of deaths, unquote. Such a scale of human suffering is hard to comprehend. The memorial that you dedicate today provides further assurance that generations to come will remember those who were starved at the hands of Joseph Stalin's tyranny. Over their history, the people of Ukraine have endured difficult times for the sake of liberty, prosperity, and peace. I admire their resiliency and their steadfast support for democratic values and principles. Many Americans have watched with amazement how this country became a democracy. We strongly support your democracy and remain optimistic that generations to come will know the blessings of liberty. Laura and I send our best wishes for a memorable and meaningful ceremony. May God bless you. George W. Bush. Slava Ukraina! Thank you, Paula. Please convey our appreci appreciation to President Bush for his tremendous act of courage as he signed the bill into law in 2006. Thank you once again, Paula. We are here to remember the whole Demar, the victims of the whole Demar. This next introduction is not so easy. It is an honor to introduce our next speaker, someone who lived through the atrocities of 1932-33 genocidal famine in Ukraine. This survivor of the Holodomor was a young boy in a village in eastern Ukraine during the famine's height. Having lost family members and seen the true bestiality of the Soviet regime, we are fortunate to have him with us today to say a few words about why this particular memorial is important for the world. Please warmly welcome Holodomor survivor Alexander Severin.
Vedme dostojna romado. Прошу вас щиро мені повірити, що мені, як людині з іншого українського покоління, яко, як здається, вже майже немає, невимовно тяжко перед вами виступати. І в той самий час радість гортає мене, що пам'ятки Чертового Голодомору нарешті збудовано. Збудовано в столиці могутньої сьогодні держави в Сполучених Штатах Америки. Ще ніби вчора ідея будови пам'ятника Жерного Гордомору в Україні тут здавалася фантастичною. Не диво, бо панували розрух після Першої світової війни. Громадянська війна, голод 1921 року. Жахлива колективізація, розгром селянства, жорстокий голодомор, репресії 1937 року, Друга світова війна, поновний голод 1947 року, сотні тисяч українців, переміщених осіб в серці Європи і їх насильна репатрація до СССР, розселення переміщених осіб по всьому по всіх країнах світа, а особливо в Сполучених Штатах Америки. Нам тут, бувчим діпістам, з тих чи інших причин не завжди везло, не завжди таланило, але відома українська впертість наперекір дала прекрасні результати, наприклад, величне відкриття пам'ятника Тарасу Шевченку в 1964 році тут, у Вашингтоні. Питання Голдомору в Україні тяжило над нами. Ще хто тут сьогодні при житті з нас, який пам'ятає вселюдний, велелюдний марш пошани жертв Голдомору по 8 евеню 1953 року у Нью-Йорку, тоді до відомого Менгеттен-центр. Мені здається, що рішучий поштовх пошани жертвам Голодомору з вини Кремля на постійній особі дали заходи з нагоди 50-ліття Голодомору тут же в Вашингтоні. І як наслідок сьогоднішнє торжество відкриття монументального пам'ятника жертвам Голодомору України, який пам'ятник тут височитиме століттями, як пересторога на майбуття, уникати в світі Голодомору взагалі. Слава і щира вшана тим, хто збудував чи сприяв будові величного пам'ятника. А жертвам Голодомору – вічна і пам'ять. Дякую. 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 Дякую can fathom or understand the horrors you endured during, during the whole of the Mar. We are eternally grateful for telling your story and sharing the truth. It is acts of bravery such as yours that will shine a light of truth upon this genocide. May God bless and God protect you for many years. We have many friends of Ukraine on Capitol Hill that unfortunately could not join us this afternoon due to previous commitments. One friend who has stood shoulder to shoulder with the Ukrainian American community in St. Patrick's Cathedral and elsewhere wishes to express his sentiments about today's dedication ceremony. Please view the monitor for a video message from Senator Charles Schumer. Hi everybody. I sincerely gr regret I'm unable to attend the unveiling of the memorial this year, so near to the 82nd anniversary of the Holodomor, one of the worst tragedies in Western history. Every year, I've tried to join you on this day at St. Patrick's in New York and in Washington, and I have for many years because I believe from the bottom of my heart it's our sacred duty to honor those whose memory calls down to us through decades for justice. 
the innocent victims of the Ukrainian genocide. It's been 82 years since Stalin used hunger as a weapon against the innocent and defenseless. He tried to annihilate the Ukrainian people and the Ukrainian spirit. But praise God, he failed in both. Stalin is gone, Soviet Russia is gone, but the Ukrainian people live on. Long may they live. I believe this memorial will be a reminder of that truth, even in the most difficult of circumstances, including those faced today by the brave people of the Ukraine. The Ukrainian people will endure, survive, and eventually thrive. An important lesson in light of these troubling times for the Ukrainian people. But like the men, women, and children who have tragically lost their lives in the genocide, the strength exhibited by Ukraine and the Ukrainian people will not be forgotten. Even on my absence on this special day, know that I'm with you in spirit this year and every year hereafter. And our thanks to Senator Schumer for his remarks. I would now like to call to the podium another familiar face to the Ukrainian-American community. We all know of and have read about her work in Congress on behalf of the Congressional Ukrainian Caucus and her efforts to focus on women's issues in Ukraine, the development of rural agriculture, and other important projects. She has traveled to Ukraine more frequently than any other member of Congress that I know of. Please welcome the co-chair of the Congressional Ukrainian Caucus, hailing from Toledo, Ohio, Congresswoman Marcy Kaptur. Thank you, Michael. Mrs. Poroshenko, you honor us by your presence today. Mr. Severin, we bow before you. Thank you. Thank you for your noble life. To all esteemed guests here today and religious leaders, and to my dear friend, Congressman Sandra Levin of Michigan, thank you for the personal invitation to join you at this unforgettable, momentous event. Thank you for the years it took to achieve this great memorial. It is appropriate today that we gather in our nation's capital, a city marked by symbols of liberty and our most sacred monuments. To freedom lovers everywhere, these enduring sites make permanent what is most precious to us. We do this to encourage the people of our nation and all nations to honor history. Monuments are lights illuminating humanity's path forward. More rare are the monuments to events so tragic and singular that we know in our hearts that we must never, ever forget them. They help us turn grief into conviction so that we never forget the hard lessons learned. Today we mark the anniversary of the birth of such a monument, an indelible marker that will outlive us. Generations to come must not forget the murderous and inhuman violence of Ukraine's Holodomor genocide during the Soviet regime. The Holodomor was unprecedented in recorded history. Millions of Ukrainians of all confessions were condemned by Joseph Stalin to die by starvation at the hands of a brutal and repressive Soviet government. For decades, this profound massacre was denied its rightful place in history. Our nation, too, failed to recognize and respond to that brutality a wrong that by our presence here today, we continue to right. In 1985, as a junior member of Congress, I was privileged to co-author the legislation to create the Holodomir Commission
to document the forced starvation of untold millions of Ukrainians at the hands of the Soviet Union. And in 2002, proudly lent my support to Congressman Levin's effort to construct this monument for which we are assembled today. And then last December, we were united in our support of passage of the Ukraine Freedom Support Act to meet the aggression that currently has invaded Ukraine, threatening her sovereign territorial integrity. Our own family's maternal grandparents emigrated to America from what is Ukraine today in the early 20th century, penniless and seeking sustenance as the post-World War I Bolshevik Revolution drove peasants into oblivion, unable to survive. However, as I discovered 60 years later, our great uncle was unable to escape, forced to spend 20 years in a Soviet gulag where his brother died. The village of their childhood was transformed forever by the Holodomir. As one cousin related to me, her horrible memories of crawling on the ground in the winter of 1932-33, scratching the frozen soil with her fingernails, trying to find a single onion to make soup for her family. This is deeply personal for me as well, but one which the American people have little understanding since so many who could have lived to tell the story perished. And so today we honor those who perished and we remember those who fought and died and fight today for liberty. The century-long the century -long Ukrainian longing for liberty has flowered in our own time, and I see it in the faces of the young people in Ukraine as I travel there. It is a new day for Ukraine. And the Ukrainian people have walked toward liberty for a long time. Their passion for freedom and self-determination reminds me of America's fight for independence 250 years ago. It is a passion that burns white hot. We have seen it repeatedly in recent years in the Orange Revolution and again at Euromaidan. You cannot conquer the spirit of a people who refuse to kneel. And this, this is the spirit of Ukraine. The people's undying drive to liberty has spoiled and infuriated tyrants time and again, and it will do so now. This monument ensures that the memory of the Holodomir genocide lives on. This monument alerts future generations about the cost of liberty and the fight for it, and against allowing oppressive regimes to rule over any people. The value of such a memorial should not be underestimated. It reminds us of our own history. It helps us educate and inform generations to come. And it serves as a daily reminder of the despicable deeds of totalitarian regimes that ultimately collapse under the weight of their own moral corruption. In closing, in his book, Bloodlands, Dr. Timothy Snyder, who was born in the Buckeye State of Ohio, <laughs> describes the tragic sacrifice of the millions upon millions of people who were forcibly starved to death in the Holodomir genocide. He says, the good people died first. Those who refused to steal or to prostitute themselves died. 
Those who gave food to others died. Those who refused to eat corpses died. Those who refused to kill their fellow man died. Parents who resisted cannibalism died before their children. This was not an act of God, but of politics, and therefore of humanity. Today, three quarters of a century later, our country, a former ally of Stalin's regime in the complexities of the 20th century, is working to write the historical record. In this act of the remembering of truth, we show our commitment to the spiritual admonition you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Today we seek to make America more free too, even from the long shadow of our darkest alliances. That is why we have gathered here in our nation's capital at this monument to the Holodomir Genocide to remember and honor noble sacrifice and face that evil which man hath wrought to make certain it will not happen again and that those who come after us will never, ever forget. God bless you all. Representative Kaptur, there are a few of your constituents in the audience, and on behalf of them and everyone assembled, thank you for those heartfelt words of support and always being there along with us. Thank you very much. Another familiar name within the Ukrainian community with us today served as Chief of Staff for then First Lady Hillary Clinton and most recently as U.S. Ambassador for Global Women's Issues. To provide remarks on behalf of Secretary Clinton, please warmly welcome Ambassador Milan Verveer. Your Excellencies, Pani Poroshenko, dear friends all, while I regret that I am unable to be with you in Washington, I am sending my warmest greetings to everyone gathered. And I want to thank all of those who work so hard to make this day possible. The monument you unveil today will stand as an enduring memorial to the millions of brave Ukrainians who perished during the winter and spring of 1932 and 33 as Stalin's regime ruthlessly stole the wheat and crops of hard-working farmers. In those terrible months, millions starved to death, villages were destroyed, and families disappeared. As you know, the Holodomor means death by hunger. It's a hauntingly simple name to describe such a barbaric act of hate and oppression. Many in Ukraine and here in the United States have long waited for today. And I am so heartened to know that for years to come, visitors to our nation's capital will stop here, stare into the disappearing wheat, and learn about the lives that were lost in the Holodomor. This monument honors the memory of those lives and stands as a testament to the bonds of friendship between the United States and Ukraine. It is also a tribute to the strength and resilience of Ukrainians who are today once again fighting 
for their nation's future and who believe so strongly in the promise of democracy and peace. The United States has a duty to stand with them, to help the Ukrainian government defend its sovereignty and maintain their democratic institutions, and to ensure that all Ukrainians face a brighter and a more promising future with limitless opportunities. I look forward to visiting this memorial in person, and in the meantime, please know you have my best wishes for a mem memorable event with warm regards and Slava Ukraini. I am sincerely yours, Hillary Rodham Clinton. Thank you, Moan, for those remarks from Secretary Clinton. Please express our gratitude to the Secretary for her continuous support of the cause of freedom and for self-determination of Ukraine. Thank you once again. Our dedication ceremony is also augmented by another friend of Ukraine. It is a pleasure to introduce Robert Karam, foreign policy advisor to Governor Jeb Bush, who will deliver remarks on his behalf. Robert. Ladies and gentlemen, honored guests, Madam First Lady, um, it's an honor to be here with you today, uh, representing Governor Bush, uh, who sends his regrets that he could not be here with us uh, to mark this solemn occasion. Uh, and he's asked me to read a letter uh, on his behalf. On this solemn occasion of the dedication of the Ukrainian Holomodor Memorial, we honor the memory of the millions of Ukrainians who perished in a famine caused by Soviet dictator Joseph Stalin. This was a horrific period in Ukrainian and European history. This memorial will remind future generations, not only of the tremendous suffering by Ukraine, but also of the moral depravity and unconstrained brutality of the evil empire of the Soviet Union, and the lengths to which Soviet rulers would go to subjugate its captive nations. These victims of the struggle against Soviet totalitarianism will forever live in our memory. This reminder of Soviet aggression is an especially poignant counterpoint to the revisionist propaganda of Russian President Vladimir Putin, who unabashedly proclaims his nostalgia for a whitewashed version of the Soviet Union. Unfortunately, it is not only history that Putin seeks to revise, but the very borders of Ukraine and Europe. It is past time for the free nations of the world to resist his illegal invasion and annexation of Crimea, his continued aggression in eastern Ukraine, and his efforts to expand Russia's hegemonic influence elsewhere. Today, Moscow's aggression threatens not only Ukraine, but Europe, the United States, and the very international order and peace that our parents and grandparents gave so much to build. Allowing Putin to act with impunity will only embolden him and other despots who seek to subjugate their citizens and neighbors. May this memorial, steps from the United States Capitol, remind all who pass it of the terrible dangers of failing to stand up to those who threaten peace and freedom before it is too late. Sincerely, Jeb Bush. Robert, we appreciate your remarks on behalf of Governor Bush. Please express our gratitude as well for being with us on this very important day. Earlier in the program, we were privileged to hear from Holodomor survivor Alexander Severin. Seeing as this genocide devastated the Ukrainian nation for over 80 years, or 80 years ago, not many survivors remain to expose the truth about Stalin's crime against humanity and the Ukrainian nation. We are fortunate, however, to have another Holodomor survivor 
who wishes to express her remarks on this auspicious occasion. It is with great honor that I represent who the motor survivor, Mrs. Olha Matuba. of Ukraine, Shanovna Ukrainsko Gromado. I am a child survivor of the Great Famine Holodomor. In 1933, during the famine, I was only five years old, but I vividly remember some episodes from that period. My parents contributed a lot to my knowledge of the famine by interpreting events which we experienced. Millions of innocent people and children were murdered by starvation, more than one-fourth of the population of Ukraine. Some villages were dying completely because all food was taken from farmers by the order from Moscow. Those were, were our relatives, grandparents, uncles, and cousins. There were no first grade classes in 1940-1941 school year in Ukraine because no babies were born during the famine in 1933. Moscow denied the existence of the famine in Ukraine and mere mentioning that word would put one in jail or exiled. For decades, people were silent. The famine in the cities was not as brutal as it was in the villages where all food was confiscated from the peasants. Our family lived in Kyiv, and my mother, Varvara Dibert, testified for the Commission on the Ukraine Famine, which was created by the United States Congress in 1985. Executive Director, Dr. James. I'll share some of my mother's testimony. In 1932-33, thousands of peasants from surrounding villages who were stripped of all food they had by Moscow flocked to Kyiv. People were looking for salvation but found death on the streets. Nobody was allowed to help peasants in any way in Kyiv. Every morning as my mother went to work, she saw some of them sitting or leaning against the buildings. Many of them were already dead, the others were dying. Most frightening were the darkened faces of mothers with small children in their arms. The children with faces wrinkled like baked apples who could no longer cry. They just squealed and moved their mouths searching for food where there was none. Trucks removed dead bodies and dying from the streets. There was a collector of homeless children next door to our house complex. Dirty and enraged children were brought from the streets of Kiev by police. In a large building, former movie hall, the doors were always guarded. Sometimes through the open double door, my mother saw the children laying on the long wooden bunk beds, just staring at the ceiling. I remember that too. Several mornings while rushing to work, she has witnessed the police dragging the half-naked dead bodies of the children from the building and dumping them in the truck, just like piles of wood and covered them with dirty rags. Civil workers in Kyiv received food stamps, 40 grams of bread daily, and 200 grams for each dependent. Bread was the main staple on our diet. I remember we were always hungry. At work, my father was given a bowl of soup every day. He fished out pieces of potatoes and sometimes bits of meat from it and brought it home for us children. In 1933, when commercial bread stores opened in Kyiv, some peasants attempted to stand in bread lines. 
the militia brutally removed peasants from those lines and forced them into trucks that took them out of the city. In bigger cities, there were special stores, Turksins, where one could buy all sorts of goods in exchange for gold. But most of the people had no gold left. All of the crosses and wedding rings were sold for food. One day, my father brought some rice and millet from Turksin. When my mother asked him how did he get it, because we had no gold, he simply opened his mouth. The crowns from his teeth were gone. I volunteered to work with the Commission on Famine with Dr. Mace, transcribing more than a hundred of the interviews of witnesses from the tapes. They were survivors who came to the United States after World War II as refugees. Some of them your parents or grandparents. The horrors of those stories from people who survived the famine are forever in my memory. According to historians, during the early months of the fateful 1933 in Ukraine, at least 25,000 people died every day from hunger. Five million in the end of 1933 alone. To 10 million deaths during the rest of the 1930s attributable to the famine. It was a crime against humanity. Memory eternal to all who died in that genocide created by Moscow. Let this memorial serve as a reminder to all people that Russian aggression toward other nations should be stopped. God bless America and save Ukraine. Бережи Україну. Дякую. 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 We are grateful and blessed to have you with us during this dedication ceremony. Thank you for those inspirational, emotional, and deeply touching remarks. I would like to acknowledge with us this afternoon, seated in the front row, are several other Holodomor survivors who have traveled hundreds of miles to be with us. Please welcome them warmly with your applause. May God bless and protect you. Please focus your attention on the monitor as we present a video greeting from another friend of Ukraine who unfortunately could not be with us this afternoon. It is the co-chair of the Senate Ukraine Caucus, Senator Robert, Senator Rob Portman from Ohio. Hi, I'm U.S. Senator Rob Portman. I'm very sorry I can't be with you today, but I wanted to take a few moments and thank everyone at the Embassy of Ukraine members of the U.S. Holodomor Committee, the Ukrainian Congress Committee of America, and everyone else who has played a part in unveiling of this memorial to commemorate the millions of innocent people who were victims of the famine genocide in Ukraine in the last century. This memorial will now stand as an eternal tribute to the men, women, and children who were killed through starvation as part of then the Soviet Union's ruthless campaign to stamp out any trace of Ukrainian national identity and political and cultural independence. It will also help educate people who may not know about one of the most horrifying tragedies of the last century, in the 20th century, and encourage them to learn more. 
Finally, it reminds us that evil is real, and it will only be defeated if we stand up and fight it together to ensure that these horrors of the past remain in the history books. Today, the people of Ukraine face a very different, but a familiar foe. An aggressive Russia has violated sovereign territory and ignited a conflict that has now left thousands dead and ceasefires broken. However, after visiting Ukraine twice in the past uh, year and a half, I have seen that the spirit of the Maidan is alive and well. I saw it when I led a congressional delegation to Kyiv to monitor the Ukrainian presidential elections back in May of 2014. There I saw the still smoldering ruins of the protesters' camps in the Maidan, where those first battles in the war for Ukraine's future were fought. I saw the true spirit of the Ukrainian people, and just as the brutal repression failed to break the Ukrainian spirit in the last century, so too will this latest effort to determine Ukraine's destiny fail. History is testing us once more, and it's clear we must stand together. We must stand with Ukraine against continued aggression. Russian forces make a mockery of the so-called ceasefire, and they continue their occupation of sovereign Ukrainian territory in Crimea and in Donbass. The United States in my view, should provide direct, lethal military assistance to Ukraine to give the Ukrainians the tools they need to defend themselves. We must tighten sanctions until Russia understands its actions are unacceptable and respects Ukraine's sovereignty. We must help win the information war and help fight back against the propaganda machine that seeks to convince the world that somehow Russians are the victims of this and not the aggressors. We need sustained, long-term support for strengthening this U.S.-Ukrainian relationship. This is why Senator Durbin of Illinois and I founded the Senate Ukraine Caucus. It's a group of senators committed to supporting Ukraine's democratic, pro-Western future. This is our mission, and we stand shoulder to shoulder with everyone who supports this goal. It's important that we learn from the past to best shape the future. The best way to honor those who have fallen in a struggle for their country is to reach our shared destinies in a time in which peace and freedom are known to everyone. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak with you today. I wish you all the best of luck. God bless America, and Slava Ukraini. We thank Senator Portman for his continued support, especially in these harrowing times for Ukraine. The Senator is a staunch advocate of military assistance to Ukraine has evidenced in his video message that to quell further Russian ag aggression and invasion of Ukraine's sovereign territory. It gives me great pleasure and an honor to acknowledge at our dedication ceremony today wounded Ukrainian warriors who are currently receiving treatment at the Walter Reed National Military Medical Center for their injuries sustained in their fight for Ukraine's independence. Please warmly welcome Ukraine's newest heroes. Amongst our speakers this afternoon are two representatives from Ukrainian diaspora community organizations. The Ukrainian World Congress is a global diaspora organization that represents over 20 million Ukrainians in nearly 50 countries worldwide. Their role is to coordinate the activities of the worldwide Ukrainian diaspora and amongst one of its projects is the International Holodomor Committee which is designed to bring recognition to the Ukrainian Holodomor. It is a pleasure to invite to the podium the President of the Ukrainian World Congress, Mr. Eugene Chorli. Ваше святости, ваше блаженство, преосвященные владеки, 
to Kisnishu Chi, Holodomore survivors, to the Ukrainian voyne, Shanona Pani Proshenko, honorable congressmen, congresswomen, ambassadors, and high level government officials. Shanona Holovo, Krinsko, Congressovo, Comitato Americhe, Dorohe, Ukrainski, Narode, Ukraini, Tavdiaspori, ladies and gentlemen. In his renowned work, The Divine Comedy, the famous Italian poet Dante gave the following chilling description of hell. When I awoke, before the dawn, amid their sleep I heard my sons weep and ask for bread. In 1932-33, Stalin recreated the same hell in order to suppress Ukraine's independence movement. At that time, 17 Ukrainians were dying every minute. 1,000 Ukrainians were dying every hour. And 25,000 Ukrainians were dying every day. And death by starvation is both slow and very painful. As a consequence, statistics from a previously suppressed census reveal that there were only 26 million Ukrainians living in the USSR in 1937, whereas there ought to have been 10 million more, namely 36 million. Notwithstanding the sheer magnitude of the Holodomor, Stalin did not succeed in his evil endeavor as Ukrainians fought for and ultimately regained their independence in 1991 and after a courageous Euromaidan got rid of an authoritarian and corrupt regime in order to be able to live in dignity and to move forward towards Europe and no longer backwards towards another Soviet Union. Sadly today, 82 years after the Holodomor, Ukrainians are once again forced to confront a new Russian aggression which threatens their aspirations to live freely in an independent and democratic Ukrainian state. In 1932-33, the international community turned a blind eye to Ukraine's unimaginable suffering and to Russia's brazen violation of our common fundamental freedoms and basic human rights. As a result, less than a decade later, another despot was emboldened to orchestrate another genocide, the Holocaust against the Jewish people and to provoke the Second World War. That is why the Ukrainian World Congress reiterates its call upon the international community under the leadership of the United States to effectively assist Ukraine in defending its borders 
to stop Russian aggression from progressing further into Europe and to ensure global peace, security and stability. On this occasion, the Ukrainian World Congress wishes to express its gratitude to the United States for recognizing the Holodomor as a genocide of the Ukrainian people and for enabling the construction of this outstanding memorial to the victims of the Holodomor in the nation's capital. With imeni Svetovo Kongresu Ukrainciu, Висловлюю велике признання за спорудження у Вашингтоні меморіалу жертвам Голодомору, Краєвому комітету США з визнання Голодомору 32-33 років геноцидом та Українському конгресовому комітету Америки. Хочу також наголосити, що Голодомор 32-33 років і нинішня агресія Російської Федерації в Україні мають ті самі причини. Це бажання Російської імперії упокорити український народ, вбити його національний дух та повернути Україну в новий Радянський Союз. Однак, я вірю, що наша спільна, наполеглива праця з підтримкою міжнародної спільноти допоможе, щоб Україна могла відзначити на другий рік свою 25-ту річницю незалежності як територіально цілісна суверенна, демократична та європейська держава. І в тому щасти нам Боже, слава Україні! Thank you, Mr. Trudy, for joining us for this dedication ceremony and for your remarks. We wish you and the work of the Ukrainian World Congress much success in your projects as being advocates for a free and independent Ukraine. We are honored to have with us this afternoon the President of the Ukrainian Congress Committee of America. Celebrating its 65th, 75th anniversary this year, the Ukrainian Congress Committee of America was the impetus for the building of the Taras Shevchenko Memorial 51 years ago. Similarly, in 2001, the Ukrainian Congress Committee of America generated the idea of the Ukrainian Holodomor Memorial and initiated the formation of the U.S. Committee for Holodomor Genocide Awareness 1932-33, co-sponsors of this event. Please warmly welcome to the podium the President of the Ukrainian Congress Committee of America, Ms. Tamara Oleksii. Your Holiness, Your Beatitude, Your Excellencies, Reverend Clergy, Madam First Lady, Distinguished Government Officials, Esteemed Ambassadors, Dear Holodomor survivors, ladies and gentlemen, today is a momentous day in the history of the Ukrainian-American community. After over a decade of hard work and anticipation, we have finally gathered here to witness the official unveiling of the long-awaited memorial to the victims of the Holodomor, Ukraine's genocide of 1932-33. As we stand in the shadow of this impressive memorial, let us not only reflect upon the horrific crime committed against the Ukrainian people 82 years ago, but also upon the millions of innocent souls 
taken by this tragedy, who, because their lives were brutally cut short by Stalin's henchmen, lost a chance to see another sunrise, hear the laughter of their children, or live out their lives in dignity and peace. Let this monument stand as a symbol of our unified efforts to expose the truth of this horrific act of genocide committed against the Ukrainian people in 1932 and in 1933, when millions of people, including three million children, were starved to death by the brutal policies of the Soviet regime. We mourn their deaths and we pray that such atrocities never occur again. As solemn as this occasion is, the Ukrainian Congress Committee of America, which spearheaded this effort, and the entire Ukrainian American community should feel a measure of pride in the unveiling of this historically significant monument. Since the inception of this idea over a decade ago, our community's efforts met with numerous obstacles in bringing this project to fruition. But we remain steadfast in our objective. And as a result, this solemn memorial will, from this day forward, stand in our nation's capital as a reminder to the world about the horrors of genocide and as an everlasting symbol to promote vigilance against senseless acts of cruelty and violence like those that befell Ukraine 82 years ago. On behalf of the Ukrainian Congress Committee of America, I would like to extend our sincerest gratitude to all those organizations and individuals who contributed to the building of this memorial. The tremendous effort of the U.S. Holodomor Committee, which worked on behalf of the entire Ukrainian American community, deserves not only our appreciation, but our praise. I would also like to extend a sincere thank you to Congressman Sandra Levin for his leadership in sponsoring the congressional bill establishing the right to erect a monument on federal land and for his continued unwavering support to our community throughout the years. I would also like to thank all those who donated their financial and moral support to the realization of this project. Your generosity and hard work have led us to this momentous occasion. It is through our unified efforts as a community that we have been able to place our mark on history. To the survivors of the Holodomor, who endured unspeakable hardships, we thank the Lord for sparing your lives. We are grateful that you are here with us today to witness this remarkable event. Finally, in memory of our Ukrainian brethren who perished as a result of the Holodomor, so many died in obscurity, so many do not have headstones to mark their passings or mourners to weep for them. May this memorial serve as a symbolic marker for these millions of innocent Ukrainian souls one that will keep their memory and their story alive for countless generations to come. May their memory be eternal. Vichnaya Pamyat. Ms. Alexi, thank you for your remarks and for the UCCA's continued work for advocating Holodomor awareness as well as advocating for Ukraine's future here within the United States. We wish you and the Ukrainian Congress Committee of America great fortitude and continued success in all of your endeavors. Thank you. At this time, I would also like to acknowledge statements of support we received from our friends on Capitol Hill, including Senator Marco Rubio, Representative Rodney Freelingheisen and Representative Brendan Boyle. A thank you to them as well. And now, the highlight of our commemorative ceremony today. The blessing of the memorial to the victims of the Ukrainian Holodomor. His Holiness Filaret of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church Cave Patriarchate his Beatitude Sviatoslav, Patriarch of the Ukrainian Catholic Church, 
and His Eminence Antony of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church in the USA, accompanied by hier hierarchy from churches, will perform the commemorative blessing. With reverence, I ask that everyone please focus your attention on the monitor above and join in communal prayer. Your Excellencies. Благословенный Бог наш, завжди нині, во всяк час і на віки віків. Святий Боже, святий кріпкий, святий безсмертний, помилуй нас. Святий Боже, святий кріпкий, святий безсмертний, помилуй нас. Святий Боже, святий кріпкий, святий безсмертний, помилуй нас. Слава Отцю і Сину, і Святому Духу, Він нині повсякчас і на віки вічні. Амінь. Пресвята і Тройця, помилуй нас, Господи, очисти ріхи наші, Владико, прости беззаконня наші, Святі зглянця і стіли немочі наші, імені Твого ради. Господи, помилуй, Господи, помилуй, Господи, помилуй. Слава Отцю і Сину, і Святому Духу, Він нині повсякчас і на віки вічні. Амінь. Отче наш, що є все на небесах, нехай святиці ім'я Твоє, нехай прийде царство Твоє, нехай буде воля Твоя, як на небі, так і на землі. Хліб наш насушний дай нам сьогодні, і прости нам провини наші, як і ми прощаємо винуватцям нашим. І не веди нас у спокусу, але визволи нас від лукавого. Бо Твоє є царство, і сила, і слава, Отця і Сина і Святого Духа, нині і повсякчас, і на віки віків. Господеві помолімся! Господи, помилуй! Ви гамбли бавай, і Лорд, щоб блести цей монумент, коммеморувати виктимів мен-мейд фемін, of 1933 in Ukraine. May this monument serve to gather us to pray for their souls and to renew the memory of the entire world as to this horrific loss of lives. Give us the courage to always give living witness and testimony to these victims. Help and direct us to be always faithful in speaking up for victims of injustice wherever it may occur in the world. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, direct us in your holy and merciful ways to remind all of the horrendous tragedy of the famine genocide in Ukraine. Jesus, you assure us that whoever follows you will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Help and direct us to encourage one another and all in the world not to walk in darkness, but in the pursuit of truth and justice for all. Send your Holy Spirit to renew within us passion for the pursuit of your truth. Lord, bless this monument with your abounding presence and bless in special ways those who have dedicated themselves with great generosity and zeal to facilitate this commemoration of the victims of the man-made famine genocide in Ukraine. For you are God, our holy, and we give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. people of the Ukrainian nation, from the United States of America and many other countries of the world, all supporters of liberty and justice for mankind, to dedicate a national monument constructed to memorialize those many millions of men, women, and children, all victims of the Holodomor, the genocidal famine in Ukraine of 1932 and 33, perpetrated against the people of Ukraine by the godless leaders of the former Soviet Union. It is altogether fitting and proper that, it, that we have finally accomplished this important milestone in such a prominent place in, our, in the heart of our nation's capital. We must never permit ourselves to forget, O oh Lord, about these victims and about the horror of what man can do to fellow man. 
examples of which we see abundantly throughout our world even today. If we permit ourselves the luxury of letting history be history, then we are doomed. If we force the memory of those millions who died out of our minds because it makes us or someone else uncomfortable, then we fail them and we will be guilty of participating in the creation of all the necessary circumstances for such devastation to occur again. Help us, O oh Heavenly Father, to never forget. At the same time, O oh Lord, enable us to move forward as citizens of a free world without paralysis, without doubt, without trepidation to unquestionably comprehend the sanctity of human life, which no man has the right to end for any possible reason. Enable us to become ever more determined as we visit this memorial to be observant citizens of the world, whether it be in Cave, Washington, or any other world capital in the Middle East or Africa, searching for the signs of further abuse or devalu devaluation of human life. Enable us to do our part in making the world a safe place in your vast creation over which you have entrusted us to be stewards and caretakers. By the grace you have imparted to us, O Lord, may we, may, we, may we be worthy of that trust as we bless this monument and as we glorify you with your only begotten Son and your all Holy Spirit today and unto the ages of ages. Благословляется и освячивается памятник цей Благодатью Святого Духа, окружению Бодвоицы и Священной Имя Отца и Сына и Святого Духа. Don't 
упокоения душ почилых рабів твоих и снопамятных от голоду в Украине уморенных и щоб проститися им от всякой провины вильной и невильной. Безначальним Твоїм Отцем і Пресвятим Благим і Животворящим Твоїм Духом нині повсякчас і на віки віки. Почилих рабів твоїх, голодом на Україні уморених, в оселях праведних вчинить, на лоні Авраамовому упокоє, до праведників приєднає і нас помилує, бо він благий і чоловіколюбець. Подай, Господи, спочилим рабам Твоїм, преснопам'ятним, від голоду в Україні уморених, і сотвори їм вічну повню.
and gentlemen, we have bore witness to a truly historic event. I know that many of us have wiped away tears of both sadness and joy as the Holodomor Memorial was being blessed and dedicated. The memorial that you had seen on the monitor would not have been possible without the creative eye of our next speaker, the design architect of the memorial, Ms. Larissa Corellas. Larissa has practiced architecture for over 30 years in Washington, D.C. And her centerpiece design is the Field of Wheat Bass Relief Sculpture. As Washington is known as a city of many monuments, Teresa Kurelas is distinguished as one of four women to have memorials in this fair city. Please warmly welcome the design architect of the Holdemore Memorial, Ms. Teresa Kurelas. I first learned about the Holodomor from my seventh grade Ukrainian school teacher, Mrs. Varvara Dibert, who recalled with pain the memory of desperately hungry Bespritulni, homeless peasant children wandering the streets of Kyiv, and then again 10 years later from another teacher, scholar and Holodomor expert, Professor James Mace, whom I met while studying at Harvard. From Professor Mace, I learned in excruciating detail of the Communist Party machine that engineered and enforced cruel and impossible grain requisitions. I, of course, did not know then that one day, with the design of this memorial, I would have the privilege of honoring the many millions of victims of the whole Damar. 
In my design, the lessons of my teachers guided me. All of us, each in our own way, have contributed to honoring the memory of the victims, whether through spoken testimony, the written word, political action, scholarly research, requiem services, or with the simple act of being present here today. My contribution has been visual in rendering a simple field of wheat as it transforms from beautiful bounty to haunting nothingness. My hope is that when standing before this memorial, people will pause to reflect on the Holodomor, a famine of massive proportions, a famine deliberately executed and cynically denied, a famine in which millions of innocent victims perished in what was once the breadbasket of Europe. This National Holodomor Memorial stands in the capital of the United States, in a country where truth may be spoken without fear of retribution. For five generations, arriving here at different times and for different reasons, Ukrainians have embraced this legacy of truth-telling, relying on America to offer moral justice. This memorial, by turning a glaring spotlight on the brutality of a deliberate famine, one intended to cripple an entire people, serves as a reminder of cruelty that should never be allowed to happen again. Only a caring community could bring to completion a project such as this. A project such as this first requires a caring Ukrainian-American family, one in which more than personal excellence and contribution to society are expected, one in which the duty to protect a threatened cultural heritage is instilled. I have been blessed to have such a family. It takes institutions within the Ukrainian-American community to reinforce those aspirations. It requires a political community in the United States that embraces rather than rejects cultural diversity. It takes another political community, the government of Ukraine, to have the resolve to understand its history and to dignify its tragedies. Finally, it takes cooperation between the United States and Ukraine to make a memorial to a Ukrainian tragedy stand in Washington, D.C. To build a memorial, takes a community of artists, architects, engineers, contractors, bronze casters, and stonemasons who care about achieving a beautiful and lasting result. And there must be a community of truth seekers, historians, scholars, and religious leaders who understand the deep need in all people to expose a heinous crime. I am deeply proud to have been part of the efforts of all of these caring communities an effort that has brought about the creation of the National Holodomor Memorial. Now it will take a caring world community to, ins to ensure that starvation as a weapon is never again used against innocent people. Без сумніву створення цього пам'ятника буде найважливішим проєктом моєї архітектурної кар'єри. Але бажаю понад усе, щоб це пшеничне поле Кожне зерно стало гідним символом тих жертв, про які моя учителька в школі українознавства не могла забути, та всіх жертв Голодомору нашого великого українського народу. Вічна пам'ять. Teresa, the audience's gratitude and jubilation is evidenced by their applause and cheers. On behalf of everyone assembled, thank you for your award-winning design that now beautifies the city of Washington, D.C. Officials from the National Park Service are also with us this afternoon and would wish to say a few remarks on this auspicious occasion.
The Nas National Park Service acted as our overall sponsor for the development of this memorial and has been with us since the beginning stages of this fairly lengthy process. I would like now to call to the podium Mr. Robert Vogel, Superintendent of Parks and Memorials for the National Park Service. Mr. Vogel. Good afternoon. It's an honor to be here today with First Lady Porachinko, Your Excellencies, our good friend Congressman Levin, and other distinguished guests. On behalf of Secretary of the Interior Sally Jewell and National Park Service Director John Jarvis, it is my distinct honor to be here today for the dedication of the Holdemore Memorial to the Ukrainian famine of 1932-33. I congratulate the government of Ukraine and the Ukrainian American community for your dedication and perseverance in seeing that this memorial is finally completed. You know, some of the most well-known, symbolic, and commemorative memorials in the world are cared for by the National Park Service from the Washington Monument and Lincoln Memorial to the World War II Memorial, the Vietnam Veterans Memorial. The sites under our care honor distinguished public figures and military and civilian sacrifices, all of which reflect our common ideals, values, and growth as a nation. There are also sites we care for that honor people and commemorate events from other countries. Among these international commemorative sites are the German-American Friendship Garden, located on the grounds of the nearby Washington Monument, the Victims of Communism Memorial, just a few blocks from here, and the statue to Ukrainian poet and artist Taras Shoshenko. And today, we honor the Ukrainian people with another monument, the Holdemore Memorial to the Ukrainian Famine. 83 years ago, the Ukrainian people in the former Soviet Union were victims of the harsh policies and cruel actions of a totalitarian regime. Joseph Stalin placed unrealistically high quotas on grain and other agricultural products and enforced the measures with the Soviet military. In the wake, seven to 10 million men, women, and children were starved to death in the resulting famine. And for decades after, information about the Holdemore was suppressed by the Soviet authorities so that today it remains largely unknown in the United States or anywhere outside of the Ukraine for that matter. And therein lies the very important role the National Park Service will play as steward of this new memorial. National parks help us not only to celebrate our greatest achievements, but also to remember our most somber and tragic moments. From the final resting place of the USS Arizona at Pearl Harbor to the Pennsylvania field where passengers and crew of Flight 93 fought back against terrorism, America's national parks preserve the places and tell the stories of some of the most painful episodes of our collective past. And starting today, the sacrifice, strength, and courage of the Ukrainian people during the Holdemore will be commemorated and told at this memorial. The National Park Service tells stories such as this not because they are pleasant 
are uplifting, but precisely because they serve as an important reminder of a painful past. But this memorial also serves as an inspiration for how the Ukrainian people overcame the horror of the Holodomor to form an independent, democratic, and free country. And my promise to you today is that the National Park Service will keep this memorial and all the places entrusted to our care to the highest standards of stewardship so that it will not only serve as a reminder of the atrocities committed against the Ukrainian people, but may also inspire future generations to create a more tolerant, unified world. Thank you very much. Mr. Vogel, it has been an honor working with you these many, many years, and we thank you for your tremendous support as our sponsor throughout this amazing journey. Thank you, Mr. Vogel. Sadly, we are approaching the conclusion of our commemorative program. And I would like to take this opportunity to express our special gratitude and thanks to all of our distinguished guests this, this afternoon, as well as to the countless who have assisted in the whole Demor Memorial building process. Many of the aspects you had seen or read about have been a testament to the, to the hard work, dedication and support of a team of people. Most notably, our humblest gratitude to the Firtash Foundation for their stately donation in 2013 to make the memorial that you see today a reality. <laughs> Representatives of the foundation are with us on this auspicious occasion, and this memorial would not have been possible without the generosity of said foundation. But there are countless other foundations, Ukrainian-American credit unions, and the government of Ukraine to also thank for their immeasurable moral support and their stalwart donations in the decade plus time for our work in this historic memorial. Also, our deepest appreciation to what I call our extended family, who made this idea of a memorial a reality. With us this afternoon are the countless technical minds of the project. From the architect on record, Hartman Cox, the design architect, Larissa Kurillas, the sculptors, Larissa Kurillas and Lawrence Welker, the foundry of Iran Bronze, the general contractor, Forrester Construction, and others. These are the individuals who guided us during the approval process in Washington and were responsible for building the memorial site and transforming that one patch of green grass to a memorial of grandeur and stature. A big round of applause for your guidance and assistance throughout this process. And lastly, ladies and gentlemen, but most importantly, to you, my fellow Ukrainian Americans, who in the thousands traveled far and wide, and at times in not so pleasant weather, to be with us this afternoon. Your moral and financial support are immeasurable, but your devotion to spreading Hold more awareness will always be remembered. Thank you. Thank you all. Chesky Slava Vam.
Spasebi. To conclude our program, I would now ask everyone to stand as the Ukrainian Banduras Chorus closes our official program with the singing of a prayer for Ukraine, Borje Veliki Yedeni.